But uh, again, looking forward to seeing uh, how it all shapes up, really, as far as today goes. So it should be a fun day of Han ahead of us here. And we obviously got a very solid match to kick it all off. Two great teams going at it as we have Fresh versus Complexity in this two-game series and many more games to come. So again, looking forward to a good day here today. Hopefully you guys are excited for some good Han. With that said, I of course am joined by a co-caster today. And I'm going to be joined by uh, somebody that's been a little bit actually. So happy to have him on here again today. I'm joined by Shorkan here. How's it going, man? It's going pretty good. And I mean, as you said, it's been quite a while since uh, I uh, have uh, been here to cast. But, you know, things get in the way, real life happens, and then you have to go do things. And yeah. Yeah. Lots of stuff like that. Well, happy to have you here today. Glad you could make time here today to, to join myself. So, uh, yeah, no, again, it, and it should be it should be overall a pretty good day. You know, we, we talked a little bit about it yesterday on the cast. Uh, really, all the matches have at least some kind of significance. And, you know, sometimes going into these final days, things are already somewhat figured out for the most part. And so it's just kind of just just watching some, some good Han. But, again, there, there is still a little bit on the line here. This matchup right here, we got Fresh versus Complexity. Complexity, if they happen to go 0-2 here, which definitely could be possible, um, there's a chance they may not make the top uh, the top six, depending on how other matches go. So they want at least a game, if not both games here, to just really secure their, uh, their moving on. Fresh, on the other hand, they're currently in that second place spot. They're absolutely moving on. It's just a matter of whether they have that buy or not. So that's kind of just a brief overview there of uh, what to expect here. But uh, overall... I'm expecting some good Han here. I hear you uh, helped Mathematical cast last week, so. Yeah, I, I was there for one of the days, one of the two days, because okay. uh, I, I just couldn't cast the second day because I still have, like, issues being a bit sick and stuff, and then I have myself coughing if I start talking too long. It's still a bit there, but, yeah. Uh, casting with Mathematical was fun. It was different. <laughs> well. But, uh Oh, again, yeah. happy to have you here on today. So you got to watch a little bit of Han there recently. So um, yeah, as far as like uh, like strats go and everything, it's it's kind of it's kind of been fun seeing uh, more shifts once again. And, and we we've now been in this this more recent patch of the the latest big balance patch that happened for for a bit now. So it seems like things have kind of calmed down as far as seeing uh, a lot of you know crazy new strategies, but. Uh, We'll see. We'll see how that kind of continues to be. I mean, so far here, this draft, um, first off, I want to note, both teams have their full rosters. <laughs> For this event, that's actually been pretty rare. So I, I'm happy to see that here, both from Mint and Complexity. And actually, I think it might be Fuzzy Sloth's birthday, or it, it might have been yesterday. Yeah, it is. It's Fuzzy Sloth's birthday, but the funny thing is, it's also Boxy's birthday today. Oh, is it really? Okay, wow. Yeah, at purpose. least I think so. It said on Skype. I, I did I did actually see that on Skype as well, whether it's today or yesterday, yeah. So happy birthday to those guys there. Enjoying it. Yeah. Playing on your time. birthday, you know. Yeah. Your favorite game. There you oh, go. I hope it's your favorite game. Well <laughs> eh, even if it's not, I mean as long as you're you're playing and enjoying it at least somewhat, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, but anyways, enough about that. We got we got this draft here going on. Behemoth Wild Soul, Ophelia, Parasite, the bands. Uh, minus in a lodestone, Voodoo Jester into profit and there's solstice coming out interesting not a not a typical jungler no no he's on the scene so yeah what do you what do you think of the draft so far shorkan well um the voodoo jester really like stands out to me and now especially with the solstice but what i really like voodoo jester for is just that you know that acid cocktail if you manage to get it on two people they're stunned for like four seconds each it's completely ridiculous and then on the other side, you have Profit, which is also a support I really think is actually kind of underpicked. I think Complexity is one of the few teams that actually makes use of it. Yeah. And it's you you got to look towards that debilitate and invigorate. Like, those two skills, when you're in a team fight and you're able to heal everybody for 150 HP, that's that's a lot. That's six, uh, no, that's more. That's um, five times that. Wow, math is difficult. 750 HP yeah. heal with yeah. a five-second cooldown. Yeah. That, that, that's actually interesting uh, right there. So, yeah, we'll see if that uh, perhaps comes out here for Voodoo Jester or not. But um, we got Mage Bane the final pick as far as before the next tier of bands go for Complexity. Nothing out of the ordinary there. But, yeah, and also with that Profit, Complexity, definitely a team known uh, for running that like you're getting at there. And um, it, it is interesting. Uh, they seem to be the only team that really 
takes advantage of such a hero. Definitely uh, an aggressive one of sorts. Um, you know, I know for the longest time he was kind of considered a support hero that it's just there was just so many abilities that you kind of wanted to level that it just felt yeah. weak because of that because you wouldn't have one thing leveled up or the other. And but uh, you know, with that ultimate change, I definitely think it opened up the door quite a bit uh, for the potential of him. So, well, complexity at least has been taken mm -hmm. advantage of that. So. Even if it's just for the 50% slow and that giant AoE, it does a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, I really like uh, Prophet as a hero, just in general. I think it's really nice with Lodestone as well, just the damage you can put out. It's like the 20% extra damage, it, you know, goes through all the negative armor or the ignoring the armor. So Head Smash is just going to be dealing that much more damage and Shatterstorm is going to be just that much more effective. Mm -hmm. All right, but, so... <laughs> Got that aggressive, you know, the Riptide combos. It's a, they haven't done that in a while, I feel like, but I know that that was talked about for a bit with that Prophet Riptide, but uh, Prophet, obviously, or Riptide, excuse me, not a hero. We really see too much. I guess Complexity would be the team maybe to pick it up if we were to see it. Fuzzy Sloth actually does have history playing it, but yeah, see if it comes out here or not. They do still need that middle hero for Fuzzy. Exactly. So. And, I mean, most... Well, there is Gladiator and Rally. Rally, I think, should be picked up more often again with the auto attack damage buff. I mean, it might not seem like a lot, but it just makes him that much of a stronger layer. Engineer. Ooh, Engineer. I've been seeing what you got play this so much in TMM. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. This is going to be fun. He, he And he levels mines. Well, not only that, but yeah, he. if this is... This could be a jungle engineer. We have seen that recently, yeah. um, and I would I would basically ex expect that really, at this point. So yeah, leveling up the mines, using that to jungle with, and also be a threat as the game progresses on. So yeah, no, he is a huge advocate of the mines, uh, both on on cast we've seen and and obviously in play. So yeah, excited to see that pick as Arachna is the final pick. So I mean, look at over a mint. They want the Kronos into an Arachna here. With their I really moves. like the Arachna though versus uh, Magebane, that's really going to do so much work. Being able to just keep him from moving around. I mean, of course he has that blink, but the spider is going to stay on his face the entire time, pretty much. And that movement speed slow is going to allow Arachna to somewhat kite the Magebane. Mm -hmm. And Devourer. And Devo. <laughs> I'm guessing that's... Fights. That that's what I was exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, it's it's they wanted that tool to be able to say, you know what, we got mines here. We're gonna bring you to those mines. But on that, that note, Fuzzy Sloth has been known for playing Flux, and I mean Lodestone Prophet oh. Flux Engineer. Wouldn't that seem like a better combo? I th I guess they're having a bit of fun with it. But I mean, as you were saying at the start, this is quite a high stakes game. Yeah, for complexity at least, definitely. Uh, they, yeah. I, I assume that they know this. I mean, I had what you got on yesterday. We were kind of going over everything. So, yeah, they're not guaranteed. It's, it's them. Uh, we got Evo Corporation vying for a, a final spot. Wop Dash is up there. Uh, they're going to be playing Sync later on today, by the way, in that rescheduled match, which actually we do plan to cover, I believe, with our second match. We'll get to that a little bit. But um, So, yeah, again, point is they're not guaranteed to move on just yet. So um, that is a great point about the Flux. That's... And it's like, what what is the advantage that you get with a Devo over a Flux? I guess the most obvious is you get that very single target threat lockdown, which is good, but is that worth it? But I mean, a Kronos can jump away. A Arachna can can he activate Hardened Carapace through? If he's stunned, yeah. If he has level two of it, I don't see why not. Level four, it they changed it, but oh, when did they yeah. change that? What the hell? They like did... they changed that, yeah. God. Also, like, uh, a bunch of changes, like Midas as well, and getting huh. a bit weaker with the strength gain and stuff. But, yeah, um, can't he activate his Hardened Carapace while getting ultied by Devo? Like, that that's really not going to lock him down, if anything. Yeah. No, he can, I just, but yeah. Yeah. I just feel like Flux was such a perfect pick. It feels like it makes sense, yeah. It yeah, is interesting I mean, how those overlooked. They could even run the Lodestone Engineer long lane, because that's an unbelievably strong lane. Mm -hmm. Although Solstice is quite a strong ganker, so you do have to watch out for that. And then you have the Prophet, who can easily support the Mage Bane, and Lodestone can solo mid. That's not out of the question at all. Yeah. Well, they win, Tivo. Well, 
And I got to say, I'm not, com Devo. I'm not complaining about that, sure. although you do bring up a good point. But, hey, Devo's an entertaining hero and an entertaining player such as Fuzzy Sloth. Looking forward to it, not going to lie. So, But, uh, yeah, it does oh, seem wow. like the synergy could have been there. Look at Kronos <laughs> with the got? pooled region. Oh, wow, early Iron Shield, the Iron yeah. Shield. Yeah, that's eight agility, by the way. Jesus. Which I thought was a pretty ridiculous change, if anything. But yeah, That's... like I've been seeing people picking it up, pick it up on like silhouette as well, just because it gives eight agility and you block ten damage. Yeah, no, oh, it's definitely a very oh, good tool to have early. Oh, this is gonna be rocket drill on two. Actually, is there enough follow up? The kicks down kind of spreads them out. Booty just are gonna be that prime target, and it is gonna be a kill. You see the decay going out from Devour. Can they maybe get NG at least in return? Yes, they can. So far, a one-for-one one exchange right here. There's definitely going to be more blood, though. Midas going to fall and make it a two-for-one in favor of Complexity. They also got the blood, also definitely winning this exchange right here. And it looks like that will be the end of it. But Complexity, I mean, they just kind of went right into them right there. And uh, we had a big skirmish as a result of that. So, well, Complexity, they come out on top. <laughs> that... I, I didn't know why I don't know why Mint actually chose to fight that because I, I have the feeling they could have gone out or they could have just not sent their entire team down there because you have to realize you have to you have a Solstice who now skilled his charge mm -hmm. who's now going to be heavily affected by that in in the early game you know while while farming he's going to be level 2 at maybe 1 minute 30 something really late like that yeah that's, well, not, that's not even that late to be honest but like 2 minutes is what I'm saying and then you have Kronos. Yeah, he wasn't really affected by it. But I guess it is actually nice for uh, Slusky in mid because he does have that boost of 280 gold. Yeah. For getting the first blood. Wait, he... Uh... Well, not first no, blood. No, not first, but he got the kill. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Did die, but yeah, he got the kill at least. So a little bit of boost there, as you pointed out. Uh, who did get the bloodlust? It was love right there. Okay, so profit. <laughs> Leading that Seven. GPM chart. Yep. Always fun to see a support like that on top, but obviously not going to last. It's starting to go down right here, but you know, in cases like this, I always kind of wonder. You get that early blowouts on that support, you know, especially when you're kind of babysitting a mid here. The idea of maybe getting a bottle with this early gold and then giving it to your middle hero is that something that you think is worth it, or is it just? That's definitely worth it. I mean, usually as a support in this situation right now, you'd have 80 gold. That's how much he's gained about. And, you know, with this addition of bottle, blah, blah, Devo can get a pair of boots right now if he would want to. Oh, wow. Profit. Wow, Profit got really low. Midas, though, is low himself. If somebody's going to fall, well, they're both going to fall. Midas did get the kill first, though, on a love, so at least took him with him. Definitely made a solid play out of it there, the spike going yeah. down. So It is going to be an engineer... Um, Laning right now, he's gonna be looking to okay. take some to pull the lane soon. Because as an engineer, you really want those levels. Because you know, all that burst from mines and keg and stun, blah blah blah, it's all really nice, but it does so much early game. But later on, it just you know falls in yeah. damage, blah blah. People get tank here. So if they can actually just pull right now, that would be really good. Mage Bane might need to. Oh, he's pull. He's He's pushing the lane, never mind. Yeah, he's being Gonna go aggressive. well for them. And there you go. Is that a triple stack right there? Yeah, it looks like it, so. Nice mid lane. Triple stack pull right there. Midas in that middle. And damage put up. Can he hit the hook? Of course he can. And yeah, love credit for nice. the kill right there. Really nice there coming out from uh, Fuzzy. Yep. Like I said, I mean, it's uh, plays like that that make it here, like Devo, of course, just entertaining to see. So he's 2 0 and 2, man. This Devo, he already has four charges on like cadaver armor this early yeah. on. He's tanky. That's, uh, he's pretty tanky. 900 HP. Level 4 right now. With a minor totem. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's doing pretty well for himself. Did, did Profit, oh no, Profit did get boots for himself. So he doesn't go that bottle idea that we were suggesting, perhaps. But, uh, you know, it's. It's it's not like it's the worst thing ever to not do it, of course. I think it's actually smarter to do it this way. So, you know, he has the boots now. He's able to harass Midas just that bit easier, not getting kited constantly, stuff like that. And, you know, having gold and levels on a profit is never bad. As you were saying in the picking phase, he has a lot of spells that are very valuable that he wants to be able to get off in teamfights. 
doesn't have that invigorate just yet, but you know, really going for the kill build, you could say, the debilitate and that persecution early on. But eventually, going to pick up that invigorate, oh. of course. Ne yes. Go so this now. is now level three, farming decently. Not doing the best, but that's the problem of uh, having uh, stun at level one. Yeah. Uh, I could imagine that really, uh, that definitely hurts his farm potential quite a bit. He loses that AoE aspect, the life still that you get, of course, in the passive. So, grinding out that level one with the charge. A little difficult, but again, considering the circumstances, not doing too bad. 225 gold per minute. Definitely want that to continue to rise, though. Arachna is having the free farm at the bottom lane with this said. Uh, 370 GPM just about. Lodestone currently. He's actually rotating <laughs> middle as Midas. <laughs> just oh. easy hook for Fuzzy that time. Yeah, Oscar up. doing a very good job with the rotation there. Yeah. Catching mint and well, I think this Devo pick has definitely paid off already. Yeah. <laughs> Three zero and two. Very, very true. But whether it uh, pays off later on in the mid game, true. that's uh, where Flux kind of shines. You know, having free farm, getting that in Sanitarius, being more and more like a carry actually. Yeah. No, that is fair. That is fair. He's he's definitely more arguably an early game presence, of course, but yeah, as a scaling goes, despite having a cadaver armor technically scaling ability, but at the same time, yeah, when it comes to his usefulness compared, that's where it can definitely go downhill a little bit. So still good to see for complexity. That's, of course, what you want to see if you have a Devo mm -hmm. mid like this. I mean, usually we'll see Boxy playing it. Yeah, Mickey a little bit too. Yeah. There. Has he played it in Dead Eye Bounty League yet? Uh, I don't know if the Dead Eye Bounty League actually. Uh, may maybe some Gauntlet, but. Oh, the hook mid. Did he hit that? And now hit, with the, uh, the nom nom nom, as I call it. Yeah. Locks him down. He's going Ghost Marches as well. He's just going full out. He's already got six charges on his E. Yeah. Thousand life. And his only stat is. Wait, he doesn't even have the Minor Totem anymore, so. <laughs> it's just raw cadaver armor right there. Yeah. 50 strength. Wow. Pretty nice to have early on. He's going to be really difficult to take down. And I would really like to see him just go for a PK Shrunken mm -hmm. and then just lock down whoever he wants to. Because the only way to stop it then is with a Bash or Ulti from Kronos. Uh, yeah, you're right. That is true. So, yeah, that's, what, that's what actually what I was going to get at. I mean, so what do you think we should expect to see? So, yeah, there you go. It sounds like the portal key into the Shrunken. Just get that early lockdown potential. Unstoppable, nearly, and... Really amplify off of that. You know, this is, has to be a frustrating time for Sasuke here. He's already had five deaths in this middle lane. Um, it's a difficult lane. There's no doubt in that. Prophet, Devo, and then you've even had Lodestone help once or twice. In fact, he's setting up again. So yeah. can't really blame Sasuke for having five deaths early on. It's just, uh, it is difficult to deal with this. So. Solstice did just get level six, though. So if they want to set something up, I think this could be the time. Kronos is here. They don't see the lodestone. He has an invis for another 25 seconds. This, yeah, so as you're pointing out, this is definitely bait, but with them not knowing lodestones here, that could really throw it all off. In fact, Kronos, he's just going to run an engineer over here. He does have the time leap, so I don't think he's too worried about getting caught. Lodestone going to be sneaky with this, but he's going to be fine. So, yeah, I think that's a blessing in disguise for Mint right there, the fact that nothing really happened because with Lodestone being there, if that invis, I think that really would have caught them off guard. So Devo, oh, he's still going to land the hook. Are you kidding me? The Elemental Warp already used. That is going to be a kill. He just walks right up and is like, you can't dodge this. And here's Kronos. He doesn't have mana for the ultimate, though. Oh, no. I was wondering why it wasn't coming out, and that probably caught him off guard, too. Now here's the counter's oh, done, and they're going to hook in Arachna. Double tap for love, in fact. It just continues so much for complexity. Fuzzy Sloth. The Devo pick just more and more paying off. 4-0-4, 4, 550 gold per minute. Yeah, not having that Kona field, that was kind of a misplay there, I guess you can call it. But. Yeah, but that's the problem of uh, Kronos, though. Once you use two leaps, like, well, once you've used one leap, you can't leap ulti anymore. Yeah. Then you just need to regen before you go, because it's, it's literally your entire mana pool mm -hmm. right now. 270 mana needed to use both skills. And yeah, Devo uh, has his portal key if he wants it. There we go. There you are. That's ridiculous. What is it, eight and a half that's, minutes in? That's insane. 
That's that's it's just so scary now. Like Devo in general is kind of a frustrating hero to lane against, especially two v one. But now the fact that he could just close this gap so quickly, he could just portal key on you and ulti you, and there's nothing you can do. That's that's intimidating. I mean, in fact, I was gonna say I wouldn't be surprised if Mai just doesn't even come mid anymore. And sure enough, nobody's mid right now. So uh, yeah. he has. I, I think he's showing the portal key. I don't know if. Well, maybe not. He might not have been at the creep wave when he got it, but you probably expect it, honestly, if you're mint. <laughs> That's coming soon, at least, so. Yeah. But this is also actually why the Devo pick makes sense. They were, their versus a Kronos and a Midas. The two heroes that are usually very slippery, and with uh, Devour, he just, um, he doesn't care about yeah. people being slippery. He just eats them, so. It's all fine there. And, I mean, with a Midas split pushing as much as he can, like, usually you just see Midas in the top lane or in bottom lane, just PK into the woods, use his spells to push out the lane, and then PK away. But if Devo's ready for it, he can just kill Midas outright. Mm -hmm. So Midas here, you see him kind of at the top lane, is trying to maybe be sneaky up here, but there's even a ward aside from what you got past the tower that is going to give them that information. That's what he's attempting here, so... Um, trying to be useful, and I mean, granted, it's, he does have two kills, to be fair, so despite having six deaths, he's the only player on the team that also happens to have kills, which is kind of an interesting uh, perspective there, but yeah, just overall for Mint right now, just not a whole lot really uh, really looking too strong. The Arachna bottom lane is uh, doing all right, has that en Energizer, as we mentioned. By the way, uh, guys, I do apologize there. I, I did actually update the overlay, as you see now. Uh, I did have the wrong overlay up. It was from yesterday. For some reason, it didn't update, but it is good now. Um, anyways, Arachnid going the Energizer first with the Steam Boots. Um, I, I guess you can't really be too critical about that. I mean, that seems like it's a solid choice here. With their yeah, build. it's it's pretty standard versus Lodestone in lane, I think. Because okay. the moment Oscar gets level 6, if you go something greedy like Ghost Marchers into a straight Shroud, you're going to get one-shotted. The okay. moment loads on the six, so you know that's where it makes sense. But um, huh. it's uh, not going to help him versus Devo hooking him into a tower. Unfortunately, yeah. that's where we just saw him drop, and it's such a blow to Mint as well that it happened to be Arachna getting caught there, because he was just the top farmer. I mean, he was like the shining beacon of hope, and now he died. <laughs> He's uh, beacons down. <laughs> under so beacon beacons down. You know. Light the beacons? No. No, there is no beacon to light. No. Yeah, it's uh, obviously still definitely game to fight for here for a minute. Not over, but it's definitely going to be a discouraging spot at the same time. And you know, it, Actually, sticking on Arachne real quickly is... Oh, Devo's coming down here, by the way. Yeah, he was spotted by Solstice, but again, he has that portal key. He wants to jump in, but it's not the most comfortable, apparently, and... Is gonna say, never mind. I'll head elsewhere. But it just, just the idea that he's constantly having to move and guessing, you know, if he's nearby, is already accomplishing plenty. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Arachna not even leveling up Heart and Carapace just yet. He's actually passing that up altogether. So I'm glad you pointed that out about it now being level four to activate while you're stunned here. So um, if it was still level two, I think you could find that debatable. But at the same time, he is doing a pretty free farming lane here. So. Wants to enhance his farm as much as possible, but gonna start getting that when he has to, of course. But won't have that for a while. With that said, and, mm -hmm. that could be an and issue. I mean, the way this game is going, though, it feels like the hardened carapace isn't even gonna do anything, especially with lodestone. Of course, you know the ultimate just getting rid of all your match armor, anyways. Mm -hmm. But Midas trying to recover a bit right now. He uh, has actually been farming in the woods, choosing to forgo a bottle entirely, just getting a. Chalice instead. And you, you see the Legion team, they're all really like centered around the Arachna right now. Only Kronos is really far out doing something else. But, you know, Hellborn team, they're not really interested in stopping a Kronos. They realize, oh, it's a Kronos. He's going to have that ultimate, but, you know, he's going to have that ultimate anyway, even if we shut him down. Yeah. So there's no point in really putting that much effort into slowing down his farm or whatever, because, I mean, what's he going to go for? Is he going to go for, like, a uh, really ulti-centered build, Staff of the Master, Restoration Stone? We can see that. I can see it happening for sure with an Arachna as the main carry, but he could also choose to go for Elder Parasite with the way that 
Um, he's been changed, you know, there's the Curse of the Ages that does double damage now during the ultimate. Oh. So you could actually deal quite a bit of damage. And I've seen um, Geometer's Bane is now a really, really good pickup on a Kronos because the illusions, they stun. Yep. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. We have talked about that before. So um, now getting there is a different story. Only 165 gold per minute. Obviously not uh, not the most healthy here in terms of hoping that he's going to be successful oh. for his team. And this is not going to help unless he gets some lucky rewind procs. It just wasn't enough. Fuzzy slot. That yep. portal key too strong. Yeah, pretty much. Devourer is just continuing as a you know, rampage in this game. But what I'd like the Hellborn to do right now is to push out the middle lane, get that defense tower, and just establish a bit more map control mm -hmm. over the Legion side. Because I feel like that's their way of moving forward in this game. They have a really formed mage main, so he's going to be on their own side of the map. And then you can have this very hyper-aggressive team of Engineer, Lodestone, Prophet, and Devourer just wreaking havoc, or at least trying to stop as many people on Mint's side from farming. Yeah. That is, you know, been, there's been so many things to kind of go over here, and yeah, in the back of, back of your mind, it's always thinking about, oh, that's right, Mage Bane is doing his thing at the top lane. Meanwhile, 450 gold per minute, he just about has that Rune Cleaver. And obviously we know what it can happen, especially once he gets that. So uh, really across the board, complexity has got to be feeling so good. And look at this mine trap being set up by the yeah, way. Yeah, I love it. Lines. I Those love are it. level four as well. So <laughs> it's a lot of damage. Five level four mines right there. If Diva could just hook yeah. somebody in. Oh, but oh. no, Voodoo's just going to die. Oh, well, there we go. He got the taunt off too. <laughs> He's just sitting right there. <laughs> the Asian, the Thai taunt. Yeah, poor guy. Yeah. Poor guy. Well, ooh, Diva wants to go middle though. If oh, what a hook! <laughs> what? What? No oh, way. Okay. How do you how do you it's avoid that, man? It's like okay. you don't even see the coming. It's in the it's in the woods, man. No. Yeah, it's, okay. yeah, it's it's easy to sit here and say as a spectator, like, oh, he should have sidestepped that, but it, it's not. It's not easy. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. nice hooks here. Often with Devourer as well, I feel like if you don't already move in the correct direction, you're going to get hit. <laughs> yep. Like, oh. the hook is pretty damn fast, and I mean... And that's in a blowing up <laughs> mines. What you got? Get it, get another taunt off. Oh, boy. It's... I I think... you got to be so on tilt if you're mint, man. I mean, this has just got to be so frustrating. Yeah, to with at this I point. mean... The idea behind their draft is really, really good. The Solstice with the Kronos, with the ranged carry oh, yeah. and Arachnid. I love it. But it just feels like after that first blood for love and the, you know, kill afterwards as well, they just had an advantage. And with Slaske getting caught a couple times mid, it's just, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. No, it's, it's just a game that just has gone out of control completely and... It could be one of those very quick games as a result of that. I mean, Probusk, he is farming well, 390 gold per minute. And I'm sure Mid at least wants to try for an actual team fight before they maybe throw in the towel right here. But because uh, that's, a, as you're getting at I mean, that's definitely where their strength lies with that Kronos, the Solstice, all that synergy here that they have. You do see they're trying to find Devo, who already has a tablet and a portal key now. But, and 1,400 health without any yeah. items that increases HP, but... You know. Plus 11 strength. Oh, he's going to find Kronos. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, there's good. they want this kill, man. <laughs> they're going to go all they're out for this kill. this kill. It's a big streak, honestly, so they're going to get it right here. He will fall, so there's a streak for Probusk there. Minus, in the meantime, oh, he's going to die to Conger, actually leaping in there, but fight continues. Devour is staying dead. He actually can't buy back right here. I thought he might have. Kronos. Oh, rewind. Yeah, the rewind, the time leap away. He actually is going to survive it, so. They get NG as well, a two for two. They kill Devour. I I think you gotta give that to uh, there. Yeah, and he died to Congor on uh, True. Midas. So, I mean, that was really, really well done from them. They managed to get a pick off, and although the you know the gold charts didn't really change, I feel like it changed a bit for Arachna. Oh yeah, he, uh, did get a kill, and he got both kills actually. So that's just 1k gold, just like that, 900 gold about <laughs> for Arachna. Like I said, he got that streak, 635 from Fuzzy Sloth alone. 
for getting that mm -hmm. kill. So, yeah, he went from, like, 380 to 430 just about in that. So 50 gold per minute raise just in the midst of that fight. So despite dying, I think absolutely feeling pretty good at as far as the result now, doesn't mean that all of a sudden mints ahead by any means. It's still behind by quite a bit, in fact, because, again, it's, it's we're so focused on this Devour and being like, okay, so I was going to scale. Well, it, he doesn't need to scale, frankly, when they have a Mage Bane just free farming. And he's going to he's gonna take care of that late game, obviously. So that that's where it's still, you know, if this was all out a very aggressive team, they didn't have this Mage Bane carry, uh, perhaps another hero like a Chipper or something, you know, as that as our core, then maybe a different story here, but the fact that Mage Man is just still farming crazy in other tower kills. Not to be yeah. negative Nancy over here, but I think <laughs> Mint is still in but circle zone. The Devourer pick, I think it was also kind of to counter Solstice and the, the solstice Kronos combo, mm -hmm. because you just hook people out. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point, actually. I didn't like it just dawned on oh. me. <laughs> and here, look. Yep, and he yep. hooks him out. Yeah, right, right on cue, man. Right on cue. Right Q. on cue. Well played right there. And look at this. The lockdown minus. Nothing he can do. Kronos is like, I've just got to run. Time leap in one second. So he should be able to escape right here. Let's a random hook. One second. Oh, he <laughs> had the idea. <laughs> he knew exactly. Oh, man. Just too late. But yeah, just, you know, on cue, me and Fuzzy Sloth, we um, yeah. know what's up. He tabletted himself out and then uh, managed to get the hook on Prophet. So. That, that was almost like pre recorded content right there. It's like, so yeah, we're exactly. going to learn how Diesel is good against Kronos. Yeah. That was beautiful. But and that, they're going to take Conquer. No, that is a great point, though. It's, uh, yeah, it's something that uh, I definitely didn't pick up on myself. And we, we saw that right there as you mentioned it. So, uh, that, that, I mean, granted, at the same time, so again, Obviously, this Devo's worked out, but to kind of go back to, like, Flux can kind of do that same thing as well. He can technically pull teammates out. Maybe not as powerful and not as much range, I guess, but still, but, he has uh, the capability. But I'm just glad we're seeing Devo, though. Oh, yeah. No, goes back Flex to that. Flux would have been, yeah, a lot more defensive in yeah. any case. And I do really like um, Love's build on Profit, though, with the maxing Invigorate. It gives so much attack speed. Four oh, attacks wow. where you just hit, 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 with a mage pain especially. Yeah, he didn't end up maxing that out. Interesting. Okay. Oh, that's an illusion, by the way. Okay, they're definitely going to see that. Ooh, that would have been a good bait by Probusk, actually. But now he knows where the real one is. Look at this. He's going to the end of this. He's going oh. <laughs> to the portal key. Oh, the portal key abuse on Devo. And down goes Arachna. That was, uh, that was, that was fun. Yeah, that, that was it's fun for us. Nice not not for Mint though. But I mean, how he didn't even see that. No, he didn't see Arachna. That was just a blind hook. Oh, that well, that's a good point. Yeah, he saw him going uphill, but yeah, as far as it actually hitting, he definitely somewhat guessed that idea. Yeah, it definitely is times like this where I kind of wish we could see that player vision, get an idea of what they truly do see. But yeah, no, he's definitely been. Well, happy birthday, Fuzzy Sloth. He's, uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> wow. kind of present here, just getting to have fun on Devo and wrecking face with it, really. So, mm -hmm. I, 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 again, I don't, not to be negative here, but I, don't, I gotta really think that Mint's on that limit now of, okay, how much longer do we take this abuse, basically, of what's yeah. going on? I, 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 I can understand the, the perspective of anything that they, they really want to get a Kona Field ult. They want to get that Solstice synergy. They want to get a Rack. They sit there with the pounding and auto attacks. Like, they've shown that they can definitely get kills in this game as all this mind trap. <laughs> that was so close to getting Solstice over here, but he's going to be fine for now. Um, so, yeah. Is he going to be fine for much longer, though? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm wondering if they're going to. Somebody might walk over here. It's oh, so boy. close. Midas, don't oh, do Midas? It. Okay, no. <laughs> He's going to carry it. Oh, man. It's so painful. Go. But they're going to be going for a semi-risky play. They're Like, they invest so many resources in getting all those Veiled Rots. Yeah. But whether they even find anything, that's yet to be seen. Yeah. I think you're at a point, though, you just got to try something like this. So, oh, pff, that's unfortunate. Had a chance on Devo there. That if if you in fact if Probus was a little more patient, I, I can't blame him. But if he would just happen to sit on this uphill and Devo was coming in right there, they could have actually definitely got a big kill on Devo again. But he was able to react, unfortunately. So no kill as a result. And Mage Bane doing his thing top lane, level 16 now. He's got the Ice Brand. Already and, up there, split pushing. Yep. 
while the rest yes. of Mint is uh, half looking for for an opportunity to go. You just see Devourer sitting behind the Prophet. Yeah. In case they want to jump Prophet, he's uh, he's gonna get hooked out. Oh, look at that! Nice start. <laughs> yeah. Right that was there. actually the keg, or not the keg, the casket used. Yep. Acid cocktail. Oh, ulti coming in from uh, Prophet. He's gonna be fine as he leaps out. Cronus put on the background. It's one here on Prophet, it looks like. But meanwhile, Arachna just melted in the background. So they get a little bit of their synergy there, but just not really. Again, it's just so tough to execute here. As, all right, he did hook a creep right there, I think. So Fuzzy Saw finally doing a poor hook. Doesn't matter though. Formless hat trick. There's a vote to concede, and GG well played, they say. So, well, what did we learn? Uh, Fuzzy Sloth and Devo is a pretty good combo. <laughs> Apparently, it's a big thing. But really, just you know, a good idea from Mint, but it was just, just too difficult from the laning phase. Yeah. Because I mean, would this could have been an entirely different game had Solstice been able to farm and be able to sit behind the Midas in mid to get those ganks off, stuff like that, but seeing as he didn't get the farm at the start on Solstice, he really wasn't able to go up against uh, Devourer or Prophet anymore with the Midas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it is brutal <laughs> seeing the 10 deaths on Slaske <laughs> on yeah. the Midas, but again, understandable really, just, they just locked him down completely and uh, yeah, over across the board, obviously, just wasn't a successful game. Point out the draft, maybe not necessarily that bad. It's just 